Our second scripture lesson this morning comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 10. This is a continuation of Paul's letter that he has written to the Corinthian church addressing the issues that they face. Hear the word of God. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful on how they build. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is D Jesus Christ. Don't you know that you, are, that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy them. For God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks they are wise by the standards of this age, they should become a fool, so that they may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, those who catch the wise in their craftiness, and again the Lord knows the thoughts of those of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about others. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours. And you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Our Lord, our God, we are gathered here on your foundation. We pray that it is your spirit that will come and help us hear your word this day so that we might be reminded that your spirit dwells in us every day, all the time. Lord God, we lift these words to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So at the end of this last week, I was at the annual pastor's retreat for the pastors in our Los Ranchos Presbytery, and we have other colleagues that come, and we have to go to Malibu. I know. It's rough. Sarah Retreat Center, I know Mike's been there, knows of its loveliness. It is the most beautiful piece of property that you can be on in Malibu. They purchased it for $50,000 long, long ago. And it sits atop the canyons of Malibu and looks out to the Pacific Ocean, and there's lots of these beautiful homes that surround us. And I know it's really, really rough, but the Malibu Creek also like runs through there. So we're all gathered there. We had gotten there on Wednesday. And by Thursday morning, you could feel the anxiety starting to creep in because we normally stay all the way to Friday at lunchtime. But near the end of Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, you could feel the anxiety because the impending rain was coming, right? And everyone's checking their weather apps, and it's coming, and it's going to be there by Thursday afternoon, and then, well, okay, Thursday evening, and, you know, we're not going to be able to get out of Malibu, and it's going to be terrible, whatever. So we, we did end up cutting the retreat short um, and all packing up, and we left by 9 p.m. So there are some of us brave souls that actually went to the, our very favorite Greek restaurant first before heading out, <laughs> which turned out to be a great idea because the rain that was coming didn't come <laughs> didn't come didn't come didn't come and then I'm you know at home all day Friday thinking okay we all left early and no rain right so once the rain did start coming though I found myself drawn into the network news you know flip in between channels but always trying to get back to channel 7 so I could catch Rob right <laughs> who through some texting messages, a few people had commented, by the end of the day, look like a drowned rat. 
Um, but, you know, here's Rob out in the rain reporting, you know, all this stuff happening. So Alan and I decided there's a perfect night to catch up on Big Bang Theory. We've got them all stocked up. So we did a binge watch of Big Bang. And so at 11 p.m., I decided to turn the news back on, go to Channel 7. And what do I see? Rob reporting on a fire engine that fell off the 15 freeway. Did, how many of you saw the... Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So here's a fire engine, right? Full fire engine teetering on the edge, right? It's on the 15 freeway. It had stopped because another truck had gone over the side and these guys were trying to rescue the guy in the truck. And then all of a sudden, you're watching, you're watching, and the engine, boom, and it just falls into this, like ravine and it's gone just gone and so I'm like oh my gosh and I'm watching this and like I'm like getting Alan 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 I'm backing it up you'll never believe this you know here's this fire truck that like drops off the edge right and then it goes on to the next story and there's a sinkhole on Laurel Canyon that swallowed up two cars just boom here they are like down it was crazy a huge fire engine two cars get swallowed up in a sinkhole it was nuts so in the daylight of the next day, I decided I'm going to like flip onto the news just to see like the resolution of these two things. And you could see in these next news reports the structural failures that had happened that caused this. You could see on the 15 freeway where the water so powerful had come and just eroded the earth underneath the asphalt. If you had been on a bicycle, you would have fallen through. Um, and then you look at the Laurel Canyon situation and a sewer head pipe had broken and, you know, years of not getting to the infrastructure, I guess, and it had eroded all this, you know, dirt away and so it was just pavement and, and boom, it just sinks in. Fortunately, in all of these incidents, everybody walked away. So that was the good news of this, but it was such evidence of the failure of these foundations that caused, you know, the earth to swallow up huge structures. And I started thinking about foundations, and especially in light of the scripture lesson where Paul talks about foundations in our life and in our spiritual life. And there's many of us here who have gone down to Mexico to build those small homes down in Mexico. And if you've gone, you understand the need, the critical nature of the foundation. The thing is in Mexico is it's rare if we get a level or square foundation. Um, we get sloping foundations and we get trapezoidal foundations and we get sometimes foundations that they didn't have enough time to finish, so they just poured the outside edge of the foundation, but the inside is still dirt and a hole. Um, and sometimes we get foundations that were poured pretty rapidly and didn't have enough time to set up and a little thin, and so the bolts that they have in them just kind of tear away. They crumble. So we go and we have to build these homes on these foundations that don't start out square or level. But I've learned from all of my master builders who are out there that it is important by the time you get to the roof, that structure has to be square and level. Has to be. For two reasons. One, you will spend an agonizing amount of time on the roof trying to get it to come together if it's not square by then. And two, I've learned the term shear strength. So if our plywood does not line up to the studs that we put up and you don't split them exactly right, you lose the shear strength of the building, meaning that the building will be weak and not effective in its own purpose. So I've learned that by the time these guys get out there, they have to do some jerry-rigging to make sure that they get it at least square and level by the time that they're putting on the roof. The foundation of those buildings is critical. So what we do sometimes is come in behind and do what we can to shore up, to square up those foundations. The Apostle Paul knows how critical 
a solid and sure foundation is to the whole structure. He's let the church at Corinth know that their foundation must be Jesus Christ and not some strong, dynamic personality that has become a leader. He talks often about these divisions that they had over these central personalities. And he says, no, you have to set that aside. That is not your foundation. Those people, those leaders are great, and they're giving you great things to do as a congregation and a church gathered, but your foundation has to be Jesus Christ. The foundation is not the person who is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The foundation itself is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul is confident in the foundation of Jesus Christ that has been laid in Corinth, and now the community of faith must take care about how they build upon that foundation. Paul tells the Corinthians that they are the temple of God, that they are the dwelling place for God, that they are, they are the dwelling place, not the building where they gathered. Way back then when Paul wrote this, there were not church sanctuaries, there were not church structures that people gathered in that they called the church. The church was the gathering of the people together. Each person who had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of them, God living inside of them, each of them a building for God, then gathered together, and that is what made the church. Not a structure, but a community. It was the community together where God wanted to dwell. A place that God wanted to live. The community of faith that is Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church would exist regardless of this building. It is God's desire, it is God's dream that churches, that gatherings, that fellowships, places where people worship exist. It is God's good gift and mercy that Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church exists. And it would exist even if the sanctuary did not. It would exist because God dwells in each of our hearts. And it would exist because even before the sanctuary is built, it existed in living rooms. And then it existed in middle schools where people were gathered together. It existed in all the places that each of us have gathered to do the work of God through Jesus Christ. Our connection to one another is what defines us, not the building. It's our connections to one another that define us. Yes, we have a beautiful place to gather in worship, a wonderful church campus that we can worship in, that we can learn in, that we can serve from. And it's a great place within the community that other community organizations come and they also gather here and invite the community in. But God's truest dwelling place is in each of us. Each of us who are flawed and misshapen, but by the grace of God, we are called together and we are made to fit together 
with all the other flawed and misshapen pieces that are out there to build a house of faith. I don't know how many of you have watched masonry or um, the sign even here that went out in front. It has slate on it in irregular pieces. If you've watched those masonry people find irregular pieces and somehow put them all together and it makes a shape that they were desiring, taking all those different pieces and figuring out how they fit together, and then it makes a beautiful structure. God's grace is taking each one of us in our different shapes and forms and sizes, in all our flaws and misgivings, and taking us and building us together in a beautiful structure that houses God's spirit. God's house of faith is built each time we follow God's plan in our lives. And that doesn't mean that each of us had to go to seminary and become a pastor. What it means is that each of us follow God's plan in our life each day. <clears throat> that God's Spirit doesn't just dwell in us on Sunday morning. God's Spirit dwells within each one of us on all the rest of the days of the week, in all the various places that God takes each one of you out into your vocations, out into those places where you work and play and shop. God's dwelling there as well. And it is his plan to gather us together to make a bigger temple for God to dwell in. But he wants you to serve in the place that you find yourself so that that dwelling place will go where you go. Because he knows that he has given each one of us the foundation of Jesus Christ. So that when erosion comes, like it did for the 15 freeway, that we will be able to withstand whatever it is that is coming in our lives. Bill said it. He talked about the church. And he didn't talk about, oh, I'm so happy I have this church building to come to while I'm dealing with cancer. See, the waters are coming right now for Bill and his life, trying to flood and erode, but he knows he has this community of faith. And so, that erosion will not happen. It won't become a giant sinkhole in his life. The big bad wolf is not going to be able to huff and puff and blow our houses down because God dwells within us and has given us the foundation of Jesus Christ. And each day we're asked to build brick by brick, not with straw or sticks, but with the strength of each one of us being those bricks. Jesus Christ simply is our good foundation. And each of us is made as a temple and a dwelling place for God, and us coming together and being connected is what creates a building of faith for God so that we might be that family of faith no matter where we are. Amen.